have failed me, but your sacrifice shall not go in vain. Akatosh, hear the last dying screams of your world as you witness my revenge. I shall turn the day into night and cleanse your foul, wretched world. Watch and tremble in your nest of filth as I bring Cold Harbor to Nern. Turn the living into the undead and drink to my victory from the skull of your half-breed champion.
約つかないかな Dragonborn. You really are something, you know. If you were anyone else... Hey, don't talk to me, okay? Were you and that bitch together? Yeah, but it looked pretty fucking cozy from where I was standing. I'll give you mesmerized. This isn't over. Dragon Ball, you don't look too good. Ship's already left for Dawnstar. He's going to drop Serena off in Falkreath and try to join us later over the Pale Pass. There's something else. You have a visitor. I have no choice. I am, as they say, caught between a rock and a hard place. The Emperor needs me now more than ever, now that Morag Bal has been destroyed. That I can be sure of, as you're both sitting here with me right now. He's not my Emperor. Oh, but he is THE Emperor, Countess. And as long as there is breath in his lungs, I am sworn to protect him. And protect him I shall. Please, with me will do just fine. I have a proposition. Please hear me out. Firstly, the demise of Morag changes things. The Emperor is in a very vulnerable position. Not only in danger from your army, but also Leowen. I want to strike a peace deal, or come to some understanding that allows the Emperor to remain on the seat of Sundered Kings. What do you mean he's in danger from Leowen? It's very unlikely you will defeat him. He now has the ear of Chain Paul and Coral. Even Count Bravel is set to send troops to join his alliance against you. But I fear in defeating you, he will descend upon the palace and take it all. If that were to happen, the Emperor and myself, I am sure, would come to a grisly end. 
Yes, Morag's original plan was to incorporate Bruma into their counties to balance the power against Leowin. Morag's desire was to protect her own interests by protecting Cetheus. She feared Leowin's growing strength. Robert's plan to marry you was a brilliant masterstroke to thwart the plot, as Bruma coming over to the Leowin camp would have silenced them for good. Now, they seek a deal with Leowin to destroy you, and their payment for backing him is Bruma, and the shared rights to rebuild Kavach. Like a northern power. You could put it that way. Bravel is very reluctant and the weakest link. Coral will only commit if he thinks there's a chance to defeat your army. Shadenhall has already joined Leowin, and has joined the Siege of Bruma. Already your garrison has been forced back inside the walls. It's only a matter of time, Rigmore. So what's your proposition? Marry Robert de Medallius. No way! After everything he's said and done? Allow Leowin the power he desires without a fight. He will go along with the peace deal, I know it. It frees Robert, forces Coral and Chadenhall back into their own counties. He will no longer be coerced into a deal with them that weakens his power, and his army will remain intact. With Bruma and Leowin in an alliance, he will make his play for the Imperial throne. Rigmore, whatever has gone before will be forgotten. This is how the noble houses have existed for centuries. Bravel will breathe a sigh of relief. Coral and Chadenhall will reluctantly toe the line. The removal of Leowin will only help to reconciliate them, especially if they are indeed given the rights to Kavach as a small gesture of the Emperor's generosity. Quintus will be pardoned and peace once again restored to Cyrodiil and the Empire. I... I don't know. I would have to speak with the Dragon. Of course. I will then be in a position to deal with the Leowins. Rigmore retains Bruma, and you, Dragonborn, will become the new Count of Leowin. You have my word. Only after the wedding, not before. You will be there with her to protect and serve her. How so? It would be a roll of the dice, and the odds are stacked against you. As you know, my loyalty is to the seat of the Empire, and I will defend it at all costs. And whatever the outcome, take my chances. To inherit it, you must be willing to cleave your way to the throne in blood. Stop it! Both of you. I do desire peace over... over... This! No, Dragonborn, I never asked for any of this. I've never had a life. If I could stop it, this madness, I would. Screw the gods, and screw the fuck. the Leowins out of the picture for good. Cetheus, for all his failings, isn't a bad emperor. He has brought stability to the Empire and prosperity. All the other nobles will fall into line once he's gone. The Emperor's future secure. I like that girl, Dragonborn. She's the Countess of Bruma by royal decree, by Titus Mead II himself. I give you my word no harm shall befall her and she can at least hope to live a normal life again. No more fighting. She won't even have to marry that scoundrel. Of that you can be sure. Send a messenger, and I know we'll have a deal. Ride into the valley and you'll force my hand against you. Then Rigmore will become Empress. No, it has to be her. She is a true pretender by dynastic blood. The nobles would demand it. Then I bid you farewell.
What do you say, Guardian General? Does he want us to surrender? Of course. What now? This has just got a lot more messy and confusing. I wish he hadn't come. It was far simpler to go kill everyone and be done with it. Pfft. Yeah, right. Oh, Dragonborn. But isn't it already written? Do you trust him? What about Bobby? I don't know if I can ever look at him again. We've come this far, haven't we? Ah, uh, you decide. Whatever you think is best. You go. I'll go along with whatever you decide. Please, I'm so tired. I just don't care anymore. Dragonborn, please. Thank you. Dragonborn, wait. What I said... The way you looked at her... Did you sleep with her? I wouldn't have blamed you if you did. She was beautiful. Rigmore, okay. <sighs> what did Blackwell have to say? I fear we have already gone too far. It could never work. Unless Blackwell is prepared to compromise. What else did he say? Our flank would be completely exposed if Coral sailed forth from the castle. If Blackwell has come to offer a way out, it's only because he fears for the Emperor, whether we win or lose. Coral's been offered a deal, right? By Leowin. And in return, they offer him their loyalty, should he usurp the Imperial throne. What if she takes him up on the deal? I take it she's not too enthusiastic about it. Simple. She agrees to marry Leowin's son, so the Count doesn't have to deliver on his part of the bargain. Giving Coral and Shadenhall Bruma would strengthen them. They would effectively control everything north, weakening his power considerably. Rigmore marrying into the Leowins gives them the edge, divides the would-be alliance of the two camps, and, when the time is right, Leowin usurps the Imperial crown. No wonder Blackwell is eager for a settlement. But how does he intend to deal with Leowin's ascendants? D. 
This changes things, as we can no longer march down the Gold Road to engage Leowin's army with our backs exposed to a possible attack from Coral. I fear, either way, we have been compromised. I don't think we have much choice. Did he give away where Leowin is now? Siege! But what about Robert? He doesn't give a shit about Robert, who has now become expendable. <clears throat> May I interject? Please do, Count Kamaeus. I have been given leave to assist any way I can. The endorsement of the Elder Council in exile permits my forces to be available even in Cyrodiil. If it is as you say, and Bruma is in a critical situation, and I propose splitting our forces, they don't know how many we are. Quintus and I could take the main force as Kingrad. Once there, hold talks with the Count. See if he is willing to join us. Whether he does or not, we park our army on Coral's doorstep, and wait. Yes. Once Leowin hears of it, he will have to move his forces to meet us, or block us from descending on the Citadel. If I were him, I would make encampment on the Red Ring Road, protecting the bridge into the Imperial City. Exactly. He would leave behind a force big enough to make sure Broom does not sally forth. I would assume Shaden holds forces mostly. I am sure there's no love lost between them and the new Imperial Army. This is where you come in, Guardian. Take Rigmore and the rest of the army on a forced march to Bruma. Break the siege and relieve the garrison. If Cassius and his marines join you, more the merrier. Make your way down the civil road and join us on Leowin's right flank. The prophecy must be fulfilled. You know as well as I this is the only way. Not only for the future of Tamriel, no. All of Nern. But also for Rigmore. When the child is born, we don't want any debris on the doorstep, as well as the flotsam that's going to be washed up on the shore. I have an idea, if you'll let me. March the army to Coral, and take Fort Ash and wait. This should bring Leowen off the mountain, as Camius suggests. And if all goes according to plan, we'll give you the edge and needed protection should both Coral and Leowen attack simultaneously if all goes south. I'll go to Bruma and inform Ingol of the situation. Once Leowen moves, Ingol sallies forth. With his men, the garrison and the guild, Chadenor doesn't stand a chance. We'll leave a skeleton crew of pick fighters and make our way to Fort Empire on Leowen's flank. That could work. A lightning strike on Fort Ash. I'll send a courier to make sure Coral knows what's best for him. We'll need to stop him from crossing the bridge. You know, into the Citadel. Countess Rigmore. He'll occupy the ruins of Fort Nickel. That's what I would do. And fortify the high ground outside way. If Reville attempts to join the battle against us, mm -hmm. that could cause us problems. If we get that far, I say we ignore Fort Nickel completely and strike the high ground, giving us the advantage in dividing his forces, and take way securing the bridge. Of course, go round the fort. It will be all told. Leowen will be forced to surrender, and the city will be spared. So, what's everyone waiting for? Let's go. Dragonborn? Are you alright? You don't look so well. Dragonborn! Out cold. Looks like that malaise you caught from the Akaviri Rigmore. But the crone said the Dragonborn was immune. But not immune from the kiss of death from a brood mother. What are we going to do now? It would take days to send for a physician. Give us some of that tonic of yours. That might help. We don't have time to wait here. We have to take her with us. Dragonborn. Hold on. I... I'm not going to let you die. I'm right here.
you came this way, dark to light, follow me. and the future. You are dying. She sent me. She wants to see you. Al Esh. You are in between the dark and the light. Akatosh moved you here so you can cross the void. They need you to wake up. Six days and nights. The battle has begun. We need to hurry. There you are. I have been looking everywhere for you. Don't worry, I'm right here. I will always be here. Oh, my dragon child. Follow your heart. I looked upon your face and saw you smile. From a place no smiles exist. They are all gathered here now. We are powerless, you and I. I shall never forget you. Never. There will always be a special place for you in my heart. Always. 
I looked upon a rising star and remembered. My love for you is greater than the universe. Now is not your time. Dragonborn, we need you to wake up now! Dragonborn, wake the fuck up! Dragonborn, by the gods, you're alive! Don't you like it? Okay. Okay, let's go. We took Fort Ash, then joined up with Ingol at Fort Empire. Quintus is holding Leowin down at Fort Nika. Kimaeus is holding Coral from Leowin at Fort Ash. Skingrad pledged to help but I can't tell you if you did. We need to push on and take the farmhouse. Then we can attack their catapults. Taking the farmhouse will weaken and threaten their middle ground. From there we can attack the heights near the well, dividing Leyland's forces. Reville is abstaining. Jaden Hall is routed. Okay.
to push on and take the heights near the well, dividing Leowen's forces. Okay. Okay! Let's take those heights! Onward! To victory! 
Yeah.
Okay. On me, to way, to victory!
something. It's... It's all like a dream. I... I need to figure out what to do next. Dragonborn, what are we gonna do now? Cyrodiil deserves better than that. With Marag gone, maybe Sethius will sue for peace. He wasn't all that bad an emperor. If only we could just... Go home. Stop the fighting. Live a normal life again. <sighs> it's over. We have won the war. Fort Nickel has fallen. Leowin has surrendered. Yeah. Skingrad's arrival has forced Charles back behind his walls. Emberville. Gravel abstained, turned his army around, and returned to Gravel yes. without a fight. Thank you, Peter, for everything. You too, Canaeus. Countess, the Legion stands ready. It doesn't feel right marching into the city. The citizens have put up with enough bloodshed these past years. Let's make camp, try to clear some of this mess out while I think about what to do next. I understand. Count Camaeus, you have proven yourself a trustworthy ally. I shan't forget. And I accept your apology on behalf of the Dominion for my father's death. Countess? No, please. Don't. Won't you stay until I have decided what to do next? Of course. Ingol, there are no words to say how grateful I am for your help in this hour of need. Please. Feel free to take your men and return home. Sorella and Angie should be waiting for your safe return. It's been an honor to fight alongside you. If you ever need me for anything, you know where to find me. Goodbye, Guardian. Rigmore? Okay, ready to make camp. I want everyone rested and ready. Take care of the wounded. Let's start clearing this place up. Looters are to be executed on sight. A lone rider approaches. I bring a message for the Lady Rigmore, Countess of Bruma. Dragon. Speak quickly. You want something from me? Speak quickly.
I'm prepared to make a peace deal. I never wanted any of this. Screw the prophecy, old wives' tales and hocus pocus. I'm in no mood for it. I would like that. Greetings and salutations, my friends. Tish! Hey, girl. <coughs> What's up? <coughs> no need, my friend. I feel invigorated again. It's been some time since I had a purpose to do anything at all. Lady Rigmore needs my service, just as her father offered his, to help us fight the Dominion to a standstill during the Resistance. I feel obliged to return the favor. Did you know my father, Eamon? Not personally. He arrived later in our struggle after the Empire betrayed us. The war had been raging for some time. If only Meade had kept his nerve after Narafin was defeated at the Battle of the Red Ring, maybe we would not have had to fight another five years alone. I don't think the Dominion accounted for the fact we would never surrender. After we crossed the desert, we regrouped in Skaven. At this time, only Hagath held out from Arinelia's forces. She followed us over the desert, and by the time she made camp outside the walls, Decianus had arrived with his legion and volunteers from High Rock, Skyrim, all over. That was a bloody day. Although we lost the city, it was the beginning of the end for Arinelia. By the time Meade had won in Cyrodiil, we had retaken Skaven and pushed her all the way back across the desert. Then the White Goal conquered that happened, and the Empire abandoned us to the Dominion. They thought they could get away with murder and began to ethnically cleanse the South, consolidating their gift from Meade. That's when your father arrived, Ripple. I have never seen such ferocity. Just the sheer size of the Nords, all berserkers. We also had a lot of former legionnaires too, threatened, awesome, and we fought on. Then one day, they were gone. It was over. The war had given me a purpose, and now I had none. I was just a lordless knight with nowhere to call home. The rest is, how shall we say, history. What will you do when this is all over? I have decided to return home to Rehad. Hammerfell is calling. 
Who knows what awaits? So what's your story, Tish? My story? Man. You ever heard of Rothgar? Well, it's a small part of High Rock in the mountains there. We lived in a small village under the shadow of Mount Sorrow. Our tribe was the Gorlana. But it got swallowed up along with most other small tribes into the bigger ones during the squabbles. That's my name, Gorlana Tish. The chief was looking for young wives and had his beady eye on me, so I up and left overnight. My mother was sleeping, but my father caught me at the door of our hut, all set, ready to go with my pack. He knew. He never said a word. He just grabbed my face in one hand, lifting me onto my toes. And with his thumb, drew a line from my nose down over my lips. He let me down and placed his hand on my shoulder with a slight nod. Man, I can tell you that was intense. You see, we don't do that kind of lovey shit most men and mare do. No way. But it meant everything to me. Sometimes I wish I could cry like you milk drinkers. <laughs> I was quite young then. Had been down the mines for most of my childhood. I'll never forget, every morning when I woke up, the very first thing I would do is just gaze up at that mountain and watch the clouds kind of get wrapped around it. Yeah, Mount Sorrow. I'll have to go back there someday. What about B? You know, Bursala. How did you meet him? Was it on the battlefield? <laughs> no, nothing like that. It wasn't long after I left the Blades. You were in the Blades? Yeah, but I don't talk about it, okay? Okay. I was crossing over the border from here, from Cyrodiil into Skyrim. It was quite high up in the Jarl Mountains, and... Man, it was so cold. A storm was whipping up the slope, and I knew I had to get to shelter before nightfall. Find a cave, or an overhang, or I would freeze to death. So I kept going. All of a sudden, I saw a clearing, away over the gorge. I knew there had been a recent avalanche, but I had no choice. I followed the fresh snow, and after a while, my way was blocked by a crevasse. It wasn't too wide. But I figured too wide for a jump, so I followed it looking for a narrow gap. I could see one up ahead. Man, it looked like I was getting lucky. But as I got closer, I could make out what looked like... I don't know, some kind of debris. But there was this guy. No kidding you, Rigmore. Upside down wedged in this hole. This crevasse. With his legs sticking out into the air. I mean, he looked frozen to death. A block of ice. <laughs> there. Hanging upside down in this crevasse. Thank my lucky stars, a way over. So I took a running jump, landed on his fat ass, and propelled myself out of the hole. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> but by dying, this poor guy had saved my life. I couldn't leave him like that. I mean, normally I wouldn't have hung around, as I wasn't quite out of the danger zone yet. It was getting dark in the wind. It was like howling. So I lassoed this guy's legs and pulled his body out of the hole. It was the least I could do, right? I mean, he was gone. Frozen stiff. Even parts of his beard snapped off in my fingers. And even under all that ice, you could tell the blood had rushed to his head which looked like a giant fucking frozen plum. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have time to stay around, or I'd be joining him. So anyway, sometime later, as I was coming down the mountain, I ran into about eight or nine bandit marauders looking for a quick septum. I mean, I was fucked, Rigmore, but they weren't going to take me without a fight. That's what we Orsimer do. We fight. So I took a couple out. 
But these other guys were getting the better of me, tough bastards. I was going down and I was shouting, Come on, you motherfuckers, give it your best fucking shot. I took a blade in the guts. Uh-oh, I thought, I'm fucking done here. Then I hear this roar, it was like, over my shoulder. And I was like, Hey, this has got to be a fucking bear or something, right? I was blacking out. My sword slipped from my fingers and I was going down. And for the first time, in a long time, I felt warm. It was weird. I was face down in the dirty snow. I mean, I could taste it. While all this shit was going on like a blur all around me. I just wanted to sleep. I said my last words with an oath to Malakath. Take me, Malakath. Let it be known I fought and died with honor, and look favorably on my clan as worthy of your gratitude. I woke up. Only the gods know how long I'd been under, but there, on a rock, sat this big fucking guy. No shit, Rigmore. The same guy I had pulled out of that hole with the frozen fucking plumhead. No way. <laughs> I mean, I should have died back there, and I was in a really bad way. You know, he took care of me, stitched my wounds, washed and dressed me, fed me, and even took me for a shit when I needed one, and has never, to this day, uttered one single word. That is quite something, Tish. Saved my life, like I saved his, I guess. <laughs> I haven't been able to shake his fat ass since. He's like... Fucked up in there somewhere. Maybe it was all that time hanging upside down with his ass sticking in the air. I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, I've been looking out for him ever since. Do you have any regrets? Hey, I better be getting back. B's not too good if I'm not there when he wakes up. And we don't want that, right? Thanks, Tish. No sweat, Rigmore. See you around. Yeah... I could sleep for a hundred years. Dragonborn, wake up. It's time to go. I'll ever be. Tish has decided to go home, back to Hyrule. You might be able to catch her if you hurry.
Tish, wait! Hey, girl. What's up? Where are you going? Room has been good to us. We don't want to outstay our welcome. Tish, please. Won't you stay? Ah, Rigmore. Don't do this to me. Tish, please. Don't go. You'll always be welcome here. Where will you go? Ah, uh, look. Me and B gonna head up to High Rock, see what's happening up there. I got some unfinished business, and talking to you kind of cleared my head a bit. I understand. No regrets, huh? One of my biggest regrets in my life was killing all those dragons. Watch out for a trap. Cethius will be surrounded by his Praetorian guard. I'll be fine, Quintus. Anyway, I have the Dragonborn. What could possibly go wrong? If anything untoward happens, I will march my legion into the city in the name of Titus Mead II and give control back to the Council of Elders. I am sure Blackwell is as good as his word. Thank you, Quintus, for everything. Don't make it sound like it's the end. This is just the beginning. Good luck, my lady. Come on, Dragonborn. Let's get this over with.
Dragonborn. Wait, what shall I say to them? Well, I certainly won't be marrying that asshole Robert, so check that off the list. The best he can hope for is his freedom. Same with the father. We hold the upper hand of the negotiations, right? And marrying the Emperor? I don't think so. All this political bullshit, how do they even live with themselves? They will do anything, stoop to the lowest of the low, fuck each other over at every opportunity for power. That's what really pisses me off. The power doesn't belong to them. It belongs to the citizens, the people of Tamriel. If only I could be a true voice for the people. Do you think that I have what it takes, Dragonborn, to become Empress? But what about you? What will you do, no matter what happens next? I love you, Dragonborn. I belong to you and you alone. I'll never stop loving you. Do you believe in the prophecy thing? What will become of us? Order your men to kill these traitors! Hold your swords. I am your Emperor! You... You... I command you kill them! You... You must obey me! You must do as I say! You will cut them down! This instant! You! Pick up your sword! Cut them down! Cut them down, I say! C kill them! <sighs> then... And I... And I am undone. It... It... It wasn't me. I... I am innocent. It was her, Morag. She murdered the children, not me. You... You can keep the crown. Take it. Take it. Please. Please. God. God. Mercy. dead. Long live the Empress.
Whomsoever takes off the head that wears the crown reigns supreme. Take your rightful place upon the throne of dragonborn kings and queens. My lady, after you. in the bud, so to speak. All of them. My lady, you look quite peakish. Are you unwell? I... I am with child. 